Welcome to my steam engine playroom. An interesting model four-stroke internal combustion engine fitted with a rotary valve which does not run. A comparison with the construction of an OS FS60 engine. Looking at the Stuart 504 boiler with one side removed and running a couple of steam engines using compressed air. Here is a four-stroke engine which was built by a friend of mine who lives a few miles from where I am. In the darkest depths of the East Riding of Yorkshire, a very pleasant part of England. As far as model engines go, this is not something I would like to tackle as a first attempt, which is what Andrew did. This is someone's first attempt at making a four-stroke engine. Not just any four-stroke engine, an engine with a really complicated rotary valve system. A few years ago, when I was well into radio-controlled aircraft, I had a couple of rotary valve engines made by Weber, a 90 and a 40. I must admit at the time I wasn't impressed with their performance or starting abilities. My friend Andrew asked me to look at this engine with a view to finding out why it doesn't start and it won't run. These are my observations. Number one, the carburetor and fuel tank are in the wrong position relative to each other. The tank is too high, which means that fuel is permanently going to flood into the carburetor. As a general rule, the outlet of the fuel tank needs to be at the same level as the needle valve which is fitted to the carburetor. That way it can't flood. As you flick the propeller to turn over the engine or use an electric starter, there is more than enough suction from the carburetor to pull the fuel through. This isn't going to happen with this engine. The carburetor is not a good fit in the end of the adapter, and even worse, the adapter is not a good fit at all on the end of the inlet pipe. This is off to a bad start, I know, but I can only speak the truth and show what I see. And don't forget this was Andrew's first attempt at making an engine of this type. I have no wish to build engines like this because they are too difficult to make and besides, I already have a comprehensive collection of miniature aeroplane engines, and I really don't want any more. This part of the engine worries me a great deal, for a couple of reasons. It is the main mounting for the propeller, and it fits on a taper on the crankshaft. But unfortunately, the taper is not quite in the right position, so when you tighten the propeller, this propeller driver is actually tightened against the crankcase. I wanted to have a look at this, but I couldn't get it off the end of the crankshaft, which is a little bit chewed up. What I'm doing here is very gently using a needle file to remove the burrs. I had to repeat this process a couple of times. Finally, I got rid of the burrs, and after polishing up the crankshaft using a piece of Scotch-Brite, I was able to remove the prop driver. I did not remove a serious amount of metal, just the burrs that were in the way. I would like to mention at this stage that my brief on this is not to mend it or make new parts for it. I will find out why it doesn't run, give the engine back to Andrew, he can make the parts and then we'll try again. Both the prop driver and the disc, which is the prop spinner, are smooth. There are no serrations on there so they do not grip the propeller and Andrew's answer to this was to drill a hole in the propeller and fit a small allen bolt. Personally, I don't think this is a good solution I would advise a bit of a rethink in this area. It's not a big job, but this is not the way to do it. This Allen cap head bolt really got in the way. Using a grinder fitted into the Proxon motor tool on the bench, I ground flats on a couple of brass washers. Here they are in position with the two lock nuts securing them. I was dicing with death tightening the lock nuts because the crankshaft thread is very thin. I wanted to check the piston seal, so I put some 3-in-1 oil down the inlet, and as you can see, most of it is coming out of the glow plug hole. And the last thing I'm going to do on this engine is tighten the glow plug up so much that it strips the thread. And as you can see here, there's still an oil leak where the glow plug fits into the cylinder head. I'm going to show you the difference between a commercially made four-stroke engine of the same capacity, 10cc, this is an OS FS60. It is obvious that at the propeller end of things, this is a very strong construction. With this arrangement, you can really tighten the propeller onto the knurled part of the front of the prop driver. It is worth thinking about the fact that four-stroke engines often backfire and throw the prop. 
which is not a good thing if you stood in front of it. This can be very dangerous, because the propeller and the prop nut fly off very quickly. I'm attaching the propeller so I can flick over the propeller to show you how much compression there is. I've lubricated the engine thoroughly using some 3-in-1 oil, and as you can see, the propeller spins very freely. When I do exactly the same with the other engine, there is a bit of a difference, but don't forget the glow plug's leaking, and my friend Andrew did admit that he wasn't pleased with the fit of the piston ring in the cylinder. This doesn't bother me, I've seen engines with very bad piston ring fits run OK once they get warm. My final thoughts on this engine. Before I attempt to start it, I would require Andrew to modify the way the propeller's held in place, the prop driver's taper, not forgetting the problem with the glow plug leaking. Over the years, I've stripped a few glow plugs because they are steel glow plugs in an aluminium hole in the top of the cylinder head. But it's a really simple fix. Drill the hole out, tapping size for a 5 16 thread. Thread the hole 5 16 by 40 and fit a steel insert with a quarter inch thread in the centre to accept the glow plug. A very quick and simple fix. I've done it many times. That's it for details about the internal combustion engine in this episode. I'd like to show something which uses external combustion. This is a Stuart 504 boiler with one side removed. This is a Babcock type boiler. And this design uses external water tubes to increase the heating surface area. The centre tube is a superheater. This is a Cotswold Heritage Perseus engine and it runs beautifully. It was used to drive a generator, and it's done a fair bit of running, but it's hardly worn at all. It's perfectly in its prime, and I've just sold it to my good friend James Evans, who should be arriving this afternoon to pick this up. Just watch how well it runs, I'll stop talking for a while. The timing is very good on this engine and it really does run well. This engine is a Cotswold Heritage Griffin type engine. It's a twin cylinder version of the Perseus. This engine has not done much running at all. You can see this by the colour of the oil residue coming from the bearings. It also runs very well indeed. I'm not using this piece of Scotch Brite to clean up the flywheel, I'm using it to slow the engine down because it's quite powerful and I wanted to see and hear it under load. As my silent type compressor has suddenly burst into life, it's time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.